We're at Oshkosh 2014 Air Venture in the Aeroplane Factory, which is one of the original exhibition buildings. And it's kind of a little bit of a backwater building these days. But one of the coolest airplanes on the grounds this year is a little airplane called a Baby Ace, which was the genesis of Experimental Aircraft Association, built in 1954. So this airplane, which is actually a replica of that airplane, has been redone by a local EAA chapter. And I understand that you guys kind of burned a little midnight oil with some of the kids here we did. to get this airplane in. We did. We had lots of youth working on it, and we had several of them uh, that obviously were over 18. Some of the younger ones, we had a, a girl as young as 12 years old working on the project, but some of the older ones were able to stay late. We did not even have these wings finished, covered, or on its gear at the 1st of July. So tell me your background with Paul. You got involved with Paul doing projects with him? Correct. Approximately 20 years ago I was introduced to Paul at the original aeroplane factory which is a building that's up in Camp Schaller and began coming down and helping Paul in the aeroplane factory volunteering there on many different projects over the years. He started this project how many years ago? It would have been in January of 2011 he began the project. I was finishing up another project. I wasn't there when the first tubings were cut. I came in a couple of weeks later, but I've been basically with the project since day one. And what was it like working with Paul Pobrezny on the very first project that EAA ever really had? This project obviously is a very special for a lot of reasons. This aircraft is what basically took the EAA from being just a small flying club in Milwaukee to the international organization it is today. And in 2010, Paul started talking about trying to bring back that energy of the early EAA with bringing another project to life, and he came up with the idea of wanting to do a replica of that original Mechanics Illustrated Baby Ace, which we started building right from the articles that were written in 1955, which was over three issues. He chronicled the building of the aircraft and published all the plans to show that anyone could build an aircraft. So that must have been pretty amazing working with Paul Pobrezny on the original airplane. Not only just this original airplane, but over the years, just working with Paul and for all those that, that could count him as a friend, and I'm proud to say I could have, um, he was just an amazing man. Uh, one of the nicest, most personal people you can, and his famous quote saying that aviation made him a millionaire because uh, it gave him a million friends. It, that says it all pretty much. And, I don't know of anyone that met Paul that has anything to, bad to say about him. After Paul passed away in August, there were some discussions with Audrey and Paul's granddaughter's husband, Mike Hoy, who also worked on the project, to what was going to happen to the project. Because I was in on the project in the beginning, uh, as well as Mike, and Mike didn't have the time, they would like me to stay with the project. So I came back to our chapter in Wausau. And approached them with the idea of bringing the project up to Wassa and finishing it in Paul's honor. For everything Paul and the whole Pobrezny family has done for aviation, um, we thought it was a very fitting way for us to honor him. It's time to elevate your flight planning experience. Intuitively plan routes, retrieve certified weather briefs, calculate weight and balance, and file flight plans. Then fly with iFlight Planner for iPad for superior situational awareness in the cockpit. Once you safely arrive, log your flight data in your online logbook. Flight planning requires a lot of resources, but now it only requires one flight planner. Plan your next flight with iFlight Planner. In, in every one of these projects and it certainly happened with this project. Oshkosh always is the deadline or the goal if you will and I understand that this little airplane went right up to the very last with so many parts of its construction. Can you tell me what happened to the wings on this airplane? How the wings were constructed so quickly? We were at the first of this month the wings we had just basically the end of June had started covering them and basically the envelope was just on them and some of the stitching was started 
when a gentleman by the name of Clifford Hatz stepped in and said, we're going to fly this thing to Oshkosh, but it needs a little help. Clifford picked up the wings on a Sunday morning and hauled them from Wassa to Merrill to where, where he had a work area. And they had not even been finished stitched yet. Thursday afternoon, he brought the wings back, as you can see them on the airplane. He finished stitching them. He taped them. Two coats of silver with the wet sanding in between. Painted the whole wings the Diana cream. Taped the wing off. Painted the uh, Stearman Vermilion on top of that. Then uh, taped off the end numbers, which I'm, I, I know that taping those off to get those as exact and as beautiful as they are, took some time just to do that. Sprayed the end numbers and had the wings back to the airport and we hung them on the airplane Thursday afternoon. The, the whole project was centered on honoring Paul and that was the big push. We thought if we had to trailer it in, we had to trailer it in, but we really wanted to fly it in to honor Paul and everything he did for aviation. So if someone were to take the idea of building a baby ace these days. Simple airplane, no electrical system, 65 horsepower. What would it cost to build the airplane? There's no really easy answer to that because as a lot of our chapter members will say, it really depends on how good a scrounger you are. Because a lot of the parts, you know, you can scrounge from friends. A lot of the non-structural items don't have to be aircraft quality, you know, so you can substitute some things. So, I, I would get, lend a guess that you should be able to build this in a neighborhood of $12,000, and that, that's just a ballpark guess. There isn't any fun or flying, and it's absolutely a beautiful flying airplane. The only issue we've had at all since the first test flight is a little vertical fin adjustment, having to hold right rudder on it, but other than that, right off the boards, it flew just beautifully. Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. The aviation industry is far too automated and impersonal. Levels of care, service, and focus on customers have faded. Concierge provides premier customer care, leading our industry on a return to service. Find us at www.concierge.aero. ForeFlight Mobile gives you better situational awareness, more productivity, and simplified decision-making in one elegant app. Start your 30-day trial today and discover the joy of flying with ForeFlight. Well, I'd like to bring in another fellow here that's been involved in this project. It's John Schmiel from Wausau Flying Service. And John just finished up some of the last flying in this airplane the day before yesterday, I think you said. Saturday, the weather cooperated. We really wanted to make sure it got here on time. And the other two guys that were test flying it um, weren't able to help. So I was honored to be um, considered to be able to fly the airplane. It was just a wonderful experience. So tell me about flying the airplane and having that goosebump moment of knowing that you're flying the airplane that Paul was working on and that Paul started this whole organization with. You know, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about the flight, but uh, we're cruising along. It's just a summer day looking out over the farm fields of Wisconsin, and it, I felt this energy, and it sounds kind of weird, but... I understood everything that Paul envisioned and uh, understood what he wanted EAA to be. And you could feel it while you were flying the airplane. You're flying a baby ace, which is the working man's blue collar airplane. And it made me think this is a story that has to be retold again. Because anybody in America with a little bit of sweat equity and a little bit of sacrifice can have one of these airplanes and experience the joy that is aviation. That really hit me while I was flying. And it was a wonderful experience. Do you think that was the same thing that hit people back in the 50s? Absolutely. I think that the general public who doesn't have access to aviation, they really don't understand how accessible it is. And I think Cirruses are wonderful, but I don't think that aviation has to cost that much. And it's not really about what you can spend your money on. When you have to put a little bit of yourself into it, it means that much more. And that's stuff that money can't buy. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is an amazing story, an amazing project to put your life moments into. So thank you for your effort and for bringing this airplane into what is probably a little bit of a backwater part of this show these days. But that's the whole point.